Hey everybody, Coffee and Chaos here, and welcome back to Anno 1800. And we are now on New World Rising and starting a fresh playthrough. So, a couple news points before we jump into the game. Uh, first things first, the playthrough that we have had going up to this point, unfortunately, is gone. For some reason, my cloud save was not working. Um, now, over the last week, I did do a poll asking if people wanted to see a new series, and because of the ongoing wars that we had, the overwhelming reaction was positive. Yes, we do want to start a fresh series. So, it is a great time with New World Rising being out, and also, I would like to say a warm welcome to all of the new Steam users who are coming to Anno for the first time. If you've been waiting for Anno on uh, Steam, it is here. Um, actually, and I will just go ahead and walk through this. Since we do know that there are going to be some new players to Anno, let me kind of walk you through what I'm doing for the start of the game. So if you've never played Anno before, you can play the campaign or you can go straight into Sandbox. Um, the campaign is just a nice little story that will take its time, introduce you to the mechanics of the game, and give you story elements and quests that are in the background. But it will end in a Sandbox game afterwards. But for us, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into a sandbox game. Uh, less guidance because I don't like having a whole bunch of annoying pop-ups. And let's see, I think I'm going to go with uh, Von Melking over here. Yeah, we'll do that. Since I'm not planning to have him in this game, uh, color-wise, I think I'm going to go with the purple color that we had before. Stands out very well on the map. And let's see if we can find a good logo for ourselves. Da, 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 da. Something like a little Florida Lee. Uh, actually, I like that right there. Cool. And we will be the uh, coffee trading company. Can I? Oh. Co. We'll do that. Don't have enough characters. We're going to have all of the additional content on. We have everything unlocked. Of course, we want all of the things. Now, I'm going to go into custom here. So, um, preset doesn't really matter. We want large starting world size, mainly large islands. Um, I think I'm just going to leave normal island difficulty on. Personally, I do like playing with sparse fertilities. Your uh, choices may vary. Um, I'm going to go with medium mineral deposits. This is just changing how many fertilities you have per island and how many minerals you have per island. Um, that's just something that you can play with as you make your own games. Now, things that we want to do. Um, I'm not going to be playing with any medium AIs because that went so poorly for me last game. I do like having Benti. I will turn every... Benti is very friendly. I think I'm going to go ahead and add Shing. And you know what? I will add Wibbly. So we'll play with all the easy AIs as they're pretty passive. You don't have to worry about them going to war with you. And that's something we'll discuss as we go further in. Now the pirates, I do like having them a little bit of a challenge because uh, eventually we're going to outpower them easily. But making them hard uh, adds a little bit of challenge to the beginning of the game. I like playing with an active upkeep. I like adding a couple things as a challenge here. Uh, income can stay on high. That's just normal. Um, half refund costs. Building relocation costs you a little bit of money. Uh, trading post restocks. We'll leave that on rare. Uh, city incense we'll leave on medium. Quest frequency on rare. Uh, influence we want to have on high. And skyscraper upkeep on low. And we're going to start with just a flagship, meaning that you start in the ocean with a ship full of goods and you have to find the island that you want. I enjoy that a lot more because it lets you pick where you're starting. And starting without a harbor. Uh, starting capital, yeah, we'll leave that on large. And I'm going to leave revealed map off because I would like to go and explore the map myself. That's kind of exciting. And I'm going to turn all of the victory conditions up, except for uh, Diplomatic Victory. And we'll go ahead and start. See, I'm really sad that I've lost all of my old playthroughs. Um, they should all have been on the cloud. I'm wondering now if I had made a mistake and somehow disabled the cloud save feature. I will be checking that after this save especially to make sure that something happens, but I did a full computer reformat over the last week. 
and that led to a few changes. So, we are just going to start exploring. Uh, who was that? I saw somebody. Oh, right. Seeing a ship doesn't tell you who they are. You have to find their island once they've settled it to tell who is what color. Uh, what do we have here? Furs and Niter. This actually could be a very useful island. Ooh, yeah. Who's that? Oh, Wibbly. Instructions. Wibbly Wibblesock. That is his name, right? <laughs> we'll find out. Oh, uh, this looks like it's one of the main islands. Now, I do want to see what kind of beaches we have here. If we're going to have a main island, we need to have some serious dock space? Wait, I know this island. I didn't know that this one could be a primary island with uh, potatoes, grain, and oil. I've played on this before where it did not have oil. And I think it had things like, um, it was like peppers and hops. I don't know that I like this for being our starting island just because it will have... The beaches are a little bit limited for actually setting up trading posts. Uh, let's check the island over here in the corner. And I will go ahead and fast forward. Alright, so we do have... Ah, he settled there. Alright, looks like we need to start moving. A competitor raised a settlement. So we know that the island arc kind of goes this direction, so we will continue to explore. What do we have here? Ah, we've got Madame Kahina. The Emporium Exotique looks forward to your patronage. So for those of you that are new to the series, Madame Kahina and a few of the other traders are there to trade items with you, and you can also sell items to them. Uh, some of them will pay a premium for very specific items, so something to keep in mind. I am very excited for this new DLC because there's some really cool things that they've done to improve upon the game. They've added quite a few interesting features. I am a humble servant of oh, the Archie Blake! Called upon for delicate occasions such Ooh. As these. Okay, if I found the two of them, I'm wondering where Eli is. Oops. You can kind of scan the map like this to Damn. see where other islands are. And you can shift right click to set your ship to go to specific I'm locations. Sure Princess Ching. Ah, oh, Princess Ching, Ching settled here. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is kind of the island I was hoping to find. Something that's got. See, like this has a nice big corner beach that you could set up a nice docklands at. Alright. There will be two more islands. Let's see who else has settled where. Coordinates plotted. Stearsman. There is something else over there. We have here. Nah, this has hops and peppers. The primary goods we're looking for is we need an island that has oil. And we need an island that has... Um... Oh, uh, what is it called? Uh, potatoes and grain. Ah! Okay, hang on. Let's slow things down for a second. Ooh. Oh, now this is a nice harbor location. We've got an extra beach on the side. We've got some oil up here on the cliff. We've got two clay deposits, three iron deposits, some zinc. Attention, I quite like this place. And right next to us, we've got hops and red peppers. Do we have a nearby location? So we have this island that has furs. Okay, I'm thinking we're going to go ahead. 
We'll establish our harbor here. And then while we're establishing the harbor, we'll explore any nearby islands to see if we can find a location that has furs. Coordinates plotted. Now the reason I'm looking for that right away is it doesn't take very long before you find yourself really needing those additional goods for higher tiers. Um, this island has everything to get you through workers and well into artisans, but very soon you're going to find yourself needing more islands for more goods. Ah, we have the penguin. I'm going to move the harbor somewhere over here. When settling an island, you just need to be somewhat close. And I'm going to do something really quick. I'm going to move it as far back as it will let me. Okay, so we are as far back as we can go. This isn't something that you have to do, but this is something that I like to do. I kind of like to frame out a harbor to see what is where. And we're going to take just a moment to kind of explore around the island. We want to go here, shift right click to there, 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 and over here. And then we will shift right click to bring you home. Okay, so. First things first, something I like to do, you can sort by building progress or building type. Uh, progress will sort by the actual tiers of citizens. Type will sort by materials, city things, public services, etc. So you can end up organizing it a little bit differently depending on your own preferences. This is just how I like to do it. Establishing our wood, you have a radius on your lumberjack's hut, so the more of that radius you can keep with just woods around it, the better off you are. Uh, let's do... I'm going to leave a second road here, and there is a very important purpose for that in the future. And we're just going to go ahead and get a marketplace here. We're not going to get too particular because we are likely going to move most of these buildings around later. Now in the early game, you can't go wrong for spamming down some houses. The more homes you have, the more people you'll have. And you always want to make sure you have at least a marketplace because that is the minimum need for your people. And as you can see, over time, it will supply your first five farmers for every house. So we'll go ahead and speed up a little bit. Mm, I am so happy to be back in Anno. It's funny, I've had the series going all along, but I spent so long in our last series going to war. Attention for the Admiral that it's nice to have a more peaceful playthrough and to be able to focus more on building... Oh, this is a little one. Uh, building things and exploring and uh, trading and actually setting up our logistics. It's going to be so much better. Ah, okay, so we have hops and grapes. Okay. Grapes are a tier 5 need, so we won't need that for quite some time, but the hops are nice. And that's used for beer with our Tier 2 workers. Alright, we've unlocked some new buildings as our population has gone up. I'm going to go back here and go to consumables because we have unlocked a fishery. Our people need fish, but we also need some wood first. Which it looks like the first little bit of wood is being delivered now. Uh, but it's going to need a little bit more than that, so we'll give it a little bit of time for this to actually ramp up. Actually, what we could do... could speed up the process by making a second one. And for those of you that are new, always make sure that your buildings are within radius. So all of our buildings need to be uh, need to deliver their goods somewhere, either to the trading post or to an airship dock or to um, what's the other option? Your I'm forgetting what they're called. Warehouses, right? Yeah, small warehouse like this. 
So as long as the green tile touches one of those on your road network, you're good to go. So we're just doubling up our wood production for a minute. And let's check out where our ship is, see what they're doing, see what they're finding. Flagship awaiting instructions. I'll take manual control for a little bit. Oh, that's a tiny island. It has furs, but we need a bigger island for furs. Finding a large enough island for furs is one of the most important things you could find. Is there anything out here? Man, I don't think there is. Oh, we got islands over here. We're probably going to find Benti over here. Yeah, I hear something being constructed. In the fog of war. Sales. Nice to meet you. I yep. just returned from my expedition. I'm Benti Jorgensen, chair lady of the Jorgensen Foundation. I love Benti. She's just so easygoing. It's got a nice little island. Sales. Now I'm wondering where Eli is. I haven't seen Eli yet. Desmond. It's the last of the NPCs on here, save for the pirates. Do we have some more islands back here? Sales. Exploring is a great thing to do in the early game, up way. until you start to get enough wood to start building stuff. Man, I might want to get that island. Or I might want to check out the islands that I know are going to be over here. I've played on this specific map type a lot. It's just one of my favorites. And the island arc just has a large arc of islands on the far right side of the map like this. And a few little islands over here with the pirates. Oh, so the pirates are always in a similar place. And uh, the bulk of the islands are in similar locations. But you can always expect a certain level of randomization of what islands will be found where. What islands will be pulled from the map pool? Right wow, where is Eli? Oh, we got some over here. Yeah, because I don't think there's anything out here. No, I'm not seeing anything. And I'm definitely not seeing him out here. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, that's a quest for Willy. Um... Yeah. And we know there's something out here. Hey, here we go. Uh, that's actually a fairly small island. Like a medium-sized island, but it has fur. So, good to know. Let's get over here. Uh, more hops and niter. Let's head back to the main island and see if we can build any more. Oh, yeah, we're capped out on wood. So we're absolutely, absolutely going to add some more farmers, going to give them some fisheries. And I'm going to hit Control and Q and look at our consumer goods. So we are producing more than enough fish to make our people happy. Which tells me that we can expand our population. Make use of all that extra wood. And with all of those extra people come new goods. So, we're going to go back to consumables. Um... Our people are going to need some work clothes. We're going to specialize a little bit in where a few of these things go later. For now, I'm just going to keep everything very close to the harbor. And it may not be the prettiest, but that's something that we will absolutely have all the time in the world to work on. Hmm, you know what? How about I do this instead?
Now, early game, you do want to be careful how many things you move around because, as you can see, moving a house one tile at the bottom right corner it costs you 12. Moving it all the way across the island, it can cost you... There's a max level that it can cost you. And in this case, for a house, it's 250. But if you're talking about something like your trading post, it could cost you... Uh, 2,500. And depending on the building, how special it is, how large it is, those prices can go up very quickly. Now, I know for a fact that there should be another... Oh, I think this is it. I think I found them. I knew there had to be another island out here somewhere. <clears throat> so, right now we are producing wool. That's going over here to our framework knitter. Framework knitter takes the wool and turns it into work clothes. The other thing we need... Let's see if we'll reach here. Ooh, not quite. Oh, if I turn it in that direction, it does. Gonna go ahead, go ahead and place our first farm. The farms are cool because you get to place all the individual fields. A fire broke out. Oh, we have our first fire. All right, so. Her Majesty leans on me to detain any who defile her sovereign laws. We've got our first fire station going up. And we found Eli. Now, fire stations, hospitals, and police stations all take time to train their equivalents to actually fight fires or fight riots or fight disease. So, while the fire is burning, because we didn't have this built already, there's nothing we can do, and if the health goes all the way to zero, the building will be destroyed, and then you have to go and rebuild it, which costs you a little bit of resources. Early game like this, not the end of the world. It's just not ideal. Gonna go back to control Q. Uh, looks like these are still producing. They're not being supplied yet. But our first few work clothes are being supplied. And you can see that reflected here as well. Flagship awaiting instructions. Uh, taking a peek over here. Is there another island to discover? Oh, here we go. I think this is the one I just found that had... Oh, this might be the one that I said was a little small. That had the uh, fur and niter. But this is a worthy grab, so... I think we'll want this island second. Has hops and red peppers on it. Got red peppers and fur, fur and niter. So we actually have two islands that have fur. And this one has hops and grapes. Do we have another island? I mean, we got little islands that have potatoes and grain. We got a bigger island over here, okay. Yeah, this might be a good secondary island to get some more potatoes and grain from. And I'm going to go ahead and send our ship out here towards where the pirates are. Explore for the last few islands in the area. This looks like it's just a couple of rocks in the ocean, not really an island to settle. Fancy making A while the sun shines. Oh, sure. We'll go ahead and do a couple easy quests. So, a lot of these quests will have an animal or something that you got to find. So, when she says find the wild animals, there's some wild animals that are in the street. There you go. Just a random wolf. I I did goose for your kindness. And we got an item for it. Cool. Firefighters are doing their job. We're probably going to lose one or two of these houses, but that's okay. Worst things could happen. Uh, maybe? Oh, they might actually save it. Cool. So there are different needs categories that you can find. So needs are the absolute basics. If you provide your farmers with market, fish, and work clothes, that's everything they need to advance to the next tier. They will fill up to their uh, minimum, which in this case is 10. The old farmer houses used to only have 10 slots for people. But now that, lifestyles, has been now that lifestyle needs have been added, 
you can get an extra 15, and that's one of the exciting things. Um, okay. Anyways, with the new lifestyle needs, there are a lot of different goods that you can provide that come from many different regions, many different tiers. And if you supply these goods, some of them give you a little extra money, some of them just give you extra population, and you can fill these homes and really build tall, as it was. So it gives you a lot of options for how much you want to play with your population, how much you want to uh, do when it comes to supplying goods to all of the different tiers of citizens. Uh, now, I could use... I think I could use a little bit extra clothing. We'll use the work clothing all the way into the next tier, so not a big deal. Uh, where's our ship? Aye, aye. We're going to go back to our flagship for a little bit while some of that's building up. Actually, how are we doing? We got about 40. While I'm away, let's build a few more homes. There we go. Top up the population before we go. Attention for the Admiral. So what do we have here? New Island. This one has hops and niter. Cool. Always good to find. Uh, niter is used later on in the game for making explosives. Very, very important for advanced weapons and a few other niche items and goods. Oh, that was actually a much smaller island than I realized. This one, though, seems to be a bit bigger. At least it has some mountains. Uh, and we've got some potatoes and grain. Not a bad find. Pretty decent sized island. Is there anything else over this way? Looks like there's something back there, maybe. Sales. Let's check out what's over this way. And is it one or two islands? I'm pretty sure... Oh. That's probably the pirate island right there. Oh, another island with potatoes and grain. The reason this is exciting is you're always going to need more islands that are supplying goods to your primary island or to secondary islands to keep things going. And potatoes for schnapps and grain for bread and for supplying all of your farms. Not my mizzen. Okay, we found Anne. Uh, where is the entrance to her island? Ah, yeah, there it is. So we found the Pirate Island. This is something that if you come into this area, you're probably going to get wrecked if you only have your flagship or your Sales. first few basic ships. So just don't do that. It's a great way to get blown up. Ooh, this is a nice island. Maybe I will want to grab a few of these over here. That'd be a fun change. Is there anything over here? Looks like there's a couple trees from a little side island. Let's go over here and check it out anyway. Just see what's over here. And we might end up sending our ship out to just kind of explore and take some of the fog of war away. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade all of our homes. We've supplied them with all their goods. And now they are no longer farmers. They are workers. Which means they have all new things that they want from us. Now, this will raise the population, but it also increases what they need from the previous tiers. So they still want the market, they still want work clothes and fish, but now they want sausage, bread, schools, and soap. They still want schnapps in the pub, but now they want a church and beer. And we'll unlock those as we gain population. Um, I will go ahead... Oh, this is the first time you guys are seeing this if you're new. Uh, we will go ahead and do some propaganda here. This is just going to give us an extra 5% influence. We're spending influence temporarily. Who's... Freedom and equality for all. I think that's Willie talking in the background. <laughs> but this will go ahead and publish the paper. And as long as the paper is running, you're spending that influence. And at the end, it will be reimbursed. Oh, it was the happy worker here. He was talking. Okay, so we have unlocked some new goods. If we look at materials, now we have unlocked bricks. Bricks take these clay pits. Which Not now have people. worker workforce as a need, as opposed to farmers. 
Um, we're going to need to put a warehouse nearby, though, because otherwise this will not reach anything. And I'm going to go ahead and surround this, and we're going to add a pair of brick factories. Where does she want to settle? Uh, do we have... Tell you what, I'll let you have that. A competitor raised a settlement. The nice thing about the lower tier AIs is they ask before they settle something. So it gives you a little bit of an option. So, something to know about a clay pit. It takes 30 seconds to create one clay. But brick factories take a minute to produce bricks. So that means you can have two brick factories for every one clay pit. Now, since this is going to be a primary resource, we want to get this established right away. Um, actually, something else I'm going to do really quick. I'm going to go ahead and move a few of these things on my hotbar. I'm going to go ahead and add a warehouse here. Some of the things that I build on a regular basis. Oh, we also unlocked the uh, paved street. It's just like these roads that we have, the dirt roads. Um, it's just a little bit more efficient. Basically, your carts can move about 50% further, so it'd be about here if this was all brick road going all the way across. So it just allows your buildings to travel further and be spaced out more, and it also adds to the radius of things like marketplaces, pubs, your fire stations, all of those have a longer radius in which they will work for your people. Um, I think I want the second brick factory first. I'm going to go ahead and add a warehouse here. Um, oh, I'm actually going to turn that off because we don't have the workers. And sometime here, I'm going to need to upgrade these, but I need more wood. What we need is a better location for producing all of our wood. So I think I'm going to look into doing that now. We have the farmer workforce to support it. So we can actually go crazy with our wood production now. And I might need to actually... Well, actually, no, I could do this. You can reach there, you reach over. Cool. Now, if you overlap the radius too much, you'll see that the percentage starts going down. It shows the building with the radius around it. So you need to space these out a little bit, and also the cliffs can eat away at some of your goods as well. That will greatly increase our wood production. These I can probably move. I'm just going to move these over here as well. Since we seem to have all of our lovely goods. Over on this side of the island, it seems to make more sense. That should be okay. Any opportunity to work together? Oh, Benty wants trade rights. Absolutely. So let's talk about diplomacy, since there's a few things that are good to know. And in the meantime, I'm actually going to go ahead and tell our ship to do some exploring pardon all the splashing noises but that's all of the queued up actions On our way. just a good time to go ahead and get rid of some of the map so things to know about diplomacy when you're looking at a character their military and your military is the number that's being referenced is the amount of influence that is spent on it so different things cost different amounts of influence. Your 
cannons in your harbor, your ships that you have, your warships, um, and even your trade posts have a small amount of influence to them uh, as they have guns on them. This will determine how war plays out. And I've mentioned war not going very well in a previous series. That is because sometimes the AI cheats. And so the medium and harder AIs, there are certain resources that it doesn't matter if you allow them to have islands that have that resource or not. They will always be able to maintain that resource. So like you can't block the AI from having um, things like sugarcane if you're in the new world. They'll always find a way, but the other way that they can cheat is with things like cannons. Uh, they can spend a thousand influence, no problem, building enough cannons to really hamper you. And the downside to that is, if they decide to go to war, and they have a thousand influence in military, and you have 400, even if you have a more powerful navy, and even if you could, over time, destroy them, they will not peace out with you until you bring their influence spent on military down to a level lower than yours. So that can make things a little tedious, a little tedious. You reach a new milestone. So we're going to keep on expanding our worker workforce. We're going to need to also add more farmers as you'll start seeing that our farmer workforce is going down as we change them over to workers. Uh, something we could start doing is we could start planning what we would like this area to look like. So, let's go to build mode, and I'm going to go to blueprint, which I think I marked that... Yeah, I actually set a hotkey for this. And I'm just going to go with a building style that I enjoy. A little grid system that I found that I really like. And I'm going to take a few of these homes and start moving them over. Alright, that opens things up a little bit. And we're going to delete some of these roads. Now you do want to be careful, you want to make sure that your homes always have access to roads, otherwise they will, over time, delete themselves. So it's a very important thing to do. Go ahead and get rid of that. And so this is just decorative space for doing other things later on down the line. Actually, part of what I'd like to do... Move that up there. If I go quiet, it's just because I'm kind of thinking my way through how I want to place a few of these streets, and I'm going to go a little overboard and get rid of a few of these. Oops. Wait a minute. When did they add that? Is Was Mass Move just added with the latest patch? Oh my gosh. That might be the greatest thing they've ever added to Anno. I had no idea that they added that with this latest patch.
thinking of city design, we're going to move a few of these homes out of the way and also closer to our buildings here. I would like one, two, three, four, five tiles going up. Um, I think I want more of the homes over on this side. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this and build one over here. Move you out of the way. Uh, let's see if I can do this. And I will start moving these... Yeah, a little bit. Let's have... You guys over here. Move these out of the way. Marketplace goes here, along the main street. Fireplace, or the uh, firefighters go here. Fireplace. Uh, let's have a pub. Right there. Does this land belong to your queen? Or may I? Let's see if it belongs to the queen or not. No, I need this one. Sorry, go find another. Uh, what other buildings do we need? Well, for right now, we don't have any, but later on, we're probably going to add a church over here. Which means we might dig into a little bit of this area here, redesign it. Okay, let's say we have... You go there. Actually, we're going to bring these houses up. And I'm so used to moving houses one at a time that it's going to take me a while before I actually remember that I can move multiple things at once. But for now, we're just going to do this. Oops. There we go. And in this manner, we can expand out and plan how our city will grow. Okay. We've got plenty of connections here for all of our homes. We've got plenty of room with which to expand. This reaches a pretty large area. And I think we'll go ahead and add a marketplace over on... Actually, let's go, like, up here. Down one tile. Bring that over. Do that, do that, do that.
Nice! That fits perfectly in that corner. And we can go ahead and use our wood to get us some more farmers. Alright! That made the whole city layout look a lot nicer. Next thing we should look at is maybe making a more dedicated area for our potatoes and our schnapps. So I'm thinking over here on this side of the island, that could be a pretty good area to do it. Um, what's that? Oh, I thought I saw another purple ship that was mine. Which is weird because I didn't make any. I just have my main ship over here just kind of going in circles. Probably not the most efficient pattern, but hey. We'll get there. Uh, bricks are still slowly building up. Can we do anything else? Yeah, let's... Unpause you. Build that, build that, and get another clay pit. So that'll double our brick production. Something that we really could use a lot more of. And I would like to go to consumables, and let's start just adding... Uh, we'll plan a slaughterhouse with a pig farm. Get the pigs first, and we have enough for the slaughterhouse, but we're short on workers. So we'll upgrade a few more. Uh, it's going to take a few more than that to get there, but that's all right. The building will continue to work as long as it's not critically understaffed. It just won't work as efficiently. Like you'll see here, it'll take a minute and eight seconds as opposed to one minute. Hmm. All right. So fairly soon here, we should see. Are you cultivated? Wait, we've only a skeletal work. I want to look after everyone. Oh, thank you, Benty. We'll fast forward to get our first little piggy. Little piggy is here. Slaughterhouse is producing sausage. And. Any moment now. Do it. Work your way up from that dirty bottom. Delivering our first sausage. No less than we deserve. And now our people have sausage, they're happy, and we're getting a few more workers for every house, and you'll see that that will fix our worker workforce problem very quickly. It's an extra three workers per worker workhouse, so or worker home, I guess I should say. We'll still add a few more over the top. Add a house here. Let's add a couple homes here. Now, Could some of this... My island? Um, what island are you looking at? Yeah, you can have that one. I know you're busy, but I have a favor to ask. Ah, she is telling us about a silos. Raised a settlement. <laughs> so, lots of things going on at once. Let's take a moment, though. We're going to actually slow the game down. And let's start planning out an area for schnapps and for potato farms. So I'd like an area where we'll have, let's say, that many fields. I'll go ahead and build the actual farms themselves up against the cliffs. And something I'm doing, you don't have to do this, it's, you know, not necessary, but I like to hold shift and add more fields. You'll see that there's a module limit here, there's a limit of 72 fields, I just like to go a little extra. And it looks like that's actually about as far as I can go without being short. Just because it squares up the fields, it looks nice, and later on you have some options, you can go back, and when you add other modules that will require more fields, you can just add those modules by taking a few fields out, adding the module, and you won't need to change your fields later. Some people like it, some people hate it. That's just what I like to do. Whoops. Let's go ahead and add a few more.
And also, you don't need roads surrounding your fields. I just like to do that because I think it looks cool. Bum. Looks like that's about as far as I can go there. Let's figure a warehouse somewhere in here. I'm actually going to put my warehouse right here on this corner. And I will put a few of these. I kind of want to disperse where they're going. Because when you have a lot of schnapps distilleries next to each other, they tend to go boom. It's one of the quirks of these things. Alright, so that's going to be four potato farms and four schnapps distilleries. That's a little something at least. Bring that down here, bring that over. And first things first, we're going to go build the warehouse. Let's get one schnapps distillery and one farm. Uh, second farm and schnapps distillery. And I think I'd like to go ahead and have a fire station back here. Because, let me tell you, when you, when they all start catching fire and exploding, it's really not good. And schnapps are one of those things that they make you a lot of money. And I think I'm actually going to go overboard on the potatoes. Because they're actually an excellent trade resource early on. They won't make you millions, but they will make you a little bit of extra money when you sell to Eli Bleakworth. Uh, let's see. Oh, I guess I can't fill those tiles. Get rid of those. Trying to find the right balance here of... That actually works out really well. And we'll put one more on the corner here. Fill in this area. How many more can I add? Actually, that's not bad right there either. Fill in that little corner. All right. Lots and lots of potatoes. All that should start coming to the warehouse, and then we have potatoes that we can trade off. We've burned a lot of our labor force when it comes to farmers, so we'll add some more over here. And we could go back to regular speed. And I no longer need those two schnapps distilleries because I have them up here. <laughs> Excuse me. Now I am short on schnapps so we will need to build a third one. There we go. Green bar is how much we're producing. Blue bar is how much we're using and now we are in the green. Good to go. Now we are short on fish so let's go ahead and take care of that problem. Don't want your people running out of fish. That makes them grumpy. And we need some more work clothes, so we need to find a good area for work clothes. And what better place than up here on the cliffs? I think I would like to go over here. Um, we're just going to run a road out here. And we're still in blueprint mode. Let's go to consumables. All right, sheep farms. Let's add some of these. I just want to see what side is considered the front. 
Looks like that side is. So we're going to take you. And just like I did before, I'm adding a couple extra fields past what is actually required. Again, you don't have to do this. You can be more space... Ah, can't even talk. Space efficient with how you build things. Again, this is just a personal preference. I just realized the music in the background sounds like the music from the uh, the New World. Fields might help. All right, let's get all of our fields started. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. And we could start to get a whole bunch of framework knitters in one location. Uh, yeah, it looks like we ran a little low on fish, didn't we? Let's go ahead and get one more just to make sure that we have more than enough production. That's the other thing that we're going to need to kind of beautify is where we have our fish and how we have them set up. I might even do that over here. Set up a nice dedicated fishing dock. Um, or I could do a little fishing pier set up here. Oh, I like that better. Now, the fishing piers, you could set up further out. And I'll show you a little something that we can do to kind of spice things up. Can that reach? Absolutely. Nice. And let's go over to, let's see, Consumables Harbor. There we go. We can add the key. This doesn't necessarily serve any purpose other than just to be an area to make this look more like a harbor. I'm going to add a few of these pilings serve the purpose of helping to be a breakwater. And now we add our warehouse, and we add our fishing piers. And we actually don't need this anymore. We can get rid of both of those. So it just cleans this area up, and let's go ahead and add some key heading this way. And maybe over there. So we'll start setting up where our piers are going to go. And you know, the nice thing is, if I set up our docklands just right, I might be able to move the docklands out here whenever we get that unlocked so that these can take advantage of the radius of it. But we'll get there when we get there. Um, What else was I working on? So we have... Oh, right. We need to get... More framework knitters. Um, oh yeah, we're actually above and beyond what we need. So get rid of those. So we're satisfying our fish need, our schnapps need. Are we close? Are they... Oh, it just needs to be supplied first. Let's take a look at the storage. Yeah, we're a little bit low on a few of these. We're going to go ahead and set a minimum stock on all of these goods to at least 50 tons. Not important right now, but it will be important later. The earlier we do this, the easier it will be. Very cool, and... Oh, you know what? We have the option to do an upgrade here. So, small trading post can be upgraded. So we're going to use a little bit of money, a little bit of wood, a little bit of brick, and upgrade to a medium trading post. This is going to double the amount of storage that you have, so it goes from 75 to 150 storage or 150 tons of storage per item. 
Uh, so all of your goods combined, they the storage counts for everything. So when you say you have 75 tons worth of storage, it means you can store 75 tons of wood, timber, fish, potatoes, etc., 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 all alongside of each other, which is quite a bit. <clears throat> what else can we get done before we end this episode? Actually, this might be a pretty good break spot. Oh, actually, I need one more of you. And now all of our goods should be satisfied. Yes. We were actually requiring... Oh, yep. Yeah. See, that's the level for four tons. We actually needed just a little bit more than four tons. So pretty soon here, we should see our production spike as soon as that last framework knitter is supplied with wool. But yeah, this has been a productive first episode. We've got the basic layout of our city. We have most of our early tier buildings. We have up to workers, and we have a few areas set up and established looking just a little bit nicer. So it's going to make a huge difference moving forward. I'm Coffee Chaos. Thank you so much for being here. If you did enjoy this and you're excited for this new series, make sure you go ahead and hit that sub button. It is completely free. It's the best way to help this channel grow. Appreciate having you here. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the episode, and be sure to leave comments down below. I love responding to you guys. Love talking to everybody in the comments. Always so much fun. And I will see all of you, as I delete this last little area, in the next one. Bye-bye.